Hey everyone, today I am continuing my series on correct dewormer usage in goats and we are talking about ivermectin which is one of the macrocyclic lactones and the other one is um, moxidectin which is the generic name for cydectin and these are referred to as the clear dewormers and um, knowing that will be important in a few days when I talk about using combination dewormers. So today we're going to talk about ivermectin and um, you can find ivermectin um, for sheep, goats, pigs, horses, but not for goats. So that means that you have to use one of the other forms um, for goats and um, sheep are the closest in terms of their, um, size and everything when it comes to, um, using dewormers. So it's recommended that you use the sheep dewormers for goats. The other reason is because, um, you need to give all dewormers to goats orally. Um, here is a little bit of information about microcyclic lactones. They include doramectin, aprinomectin, ivermectin, milbamycin, moxidectin, and selamectin. And you will see these for like all the different species, but the only ones in the U.S. that have been a, that have been really researched in goats would be the ivermectin and the moxidectin. In Europe, they have used. Um, Aprinomectin is actually approved for use in goats in the UK and also the European Union. So <clears throat> um, that is another fun little thing to know, <clears throat> um, even though it's not been researched um, and it's not used in the United States for goats. So what I'm going to, the information I'm going to give you, um, just like the last two days comes from the American Consortium for Small Ruminant and Parasite Control. Um, you can get a copy of this if you go to my podcast episode on um, new guidelines for using dewormers in goats. That was where I interviewed Dr. Michael Posado, who was the, the veterinarian researcher, author, who worked on the third revision of this form. And um, the form is um, right here, or the chart, I should say. And the third column is Ivomec. And there's a little uh, circle R, which means registered trademark. So Ivomec is the brand name of Ivermectin. So you will see a number of generic Ivermectins um, also out there. <coughs> and when and you want to make sure that you get the sheep, the sheep drench, the ivermectin sold for cattle. There's not an oral ivermectin sold for cattle. It's only injectable or pour on and pour ons, uh, pour on ivermectin is not absorbed real well by goats. And um, you don't ever want to use an injectable in goats because the milk withdrawal is insanely long. Injectables stay in the body a lot longer. And there's two problems with that. One is that it gets, the strength of it gets weaker and weaker and weaker the longer it's in the body. Um, the <coughs> Which means that any worms that are in the body and have survived that deworming, any worms that the goat picks up, like if, if you give the goat the dewormer and they go out into the pasture and they start eating more grass, short grass that's got worm larvae on it, those worms are going to be exposed to this very low level of ivermectin, which will then, um, they'll survive and be resistant to it. So it's like you've just vaccinated the worms for ivermectin. So they can survive the ivermectin and their offspring will be able to survive the ivermectin. So this is why injectable dewormers are not the, the biggest, there's two really big reasons. I don't know which one is more important. One is if you inject dewormers into goats, you will wind up with dewormer resistance much faster than if you give it orally. 
The other thing is that it does stay in the system a crazy long time. And so the milk withdrawal, if you inject ivermectin, your milk withdrawal is going to be uh, somewhere around 45 days. So who wants to be milking a goat and dumping the milk for 45 days? If you're not milking and your kids are just nursing, um, it's not as bad, but you still have that issue that you are breeding um, ivermectin resistant worms in those goats that got that. And that you really don't want to do that because ultimately all the worms on your farm will be resistant to the dewormers. Um, honestly, if you even have half of the worms on your farm that are not killed by the dewormers, you're going to have a hard time keeping your goats alive because most goats really need as close to hundred percent worm kill as possible. Once they are showing severe signs of parasitism and so <clears throat> you really want to um, use dewormers that are going to kill the worms as completely as possible. Um, so the goats need twice as much of the Ivomex sheep drench as sheep do. And so it winds up being quite a bit. This is, you've got to give quite a bit for the, the for most of the other dewormers, you can just use a, a syringe that you would use for injections, but just don't have the needle on it. But when you're giving the um, sheep drench, you really need to have a um, drenching syringe to be able to do this. And um, cause like for a 50 pound goat, it would be 12 cc's for a hundred pound goat. It would be 24 cc's. So it's actually quite a lot. And <clears throat> those of us who have been around for a really long time know that people used to give the cattle ivermectin, the injectable ivermectin, we would give it orally. And that is really, really discouraged because um, it was not made to survive the rumen of the goat. <coughs> <coughs> and it hasn't actually been researched. So it is probably, you are probably going to wind up with dewormer resistance a lot faster if you give an injectable orally because it's not going to be as effective at killing the worms, which means you're going to wind up with a lot more resistant worms. And this is probably one reason why people who have been raising goats for as long as I have, you know, like 15 to 20 years ago, we had complete dewormer resistance on our farm. None of the dewormers worked. So we could not do anything when our goats, one of our goats got a really heavy load of parasites. We just, there was nothing we could do, just sit there and watch them die. And um, of course we tried, but you know, you, you give them a dewormer and there was like no improvement at all in the fecal count because it just wasn't, they weren't working anymore because um, well, for a variety of reasons, you know, because 15 to 20 years ago, we were giving them to the goats on a schedule. Um, and underdosing many times um, or giving the cattle injectable orally and not realizing that that, that wasn't, it wasn't going to survive. So it wasn't going to survive the um, digestive tract of the goat to actually kill all the worms it needed to kill. <clears throat> um, down here, you also have the information on the, um, milk and meat withdrawal. So if you use ivermectin sheep drench, the meat withdrawal time is 20 days and the milk withdrawal is 20 days. So it's kind of a long time to be dumping milk, which is one reason um, I'm not super crazy about using it unless it is absolutely necessary. So for those of us with milk goats, we don't really like to be dumping our milk. So um, if you've got a form with the American Consortium of Small Ruminant Parasite Control, be sure you've got the one with the Wormax logo on it because this is the most current. If it just has the name across the top, that's one of the older charts, which does not have all of this information on it. This, this is now up to three pages because the 2021 edition added a lot to it. If you don't have one of these, you can go to our um, website and download it. Um, you can also listen to this episode 
on For the Love of Goats and um, where Dr. Posado talks about revising the chart um, in 2021. I hope you have found this helpful. If you have any additional questions, be sure to post in the comment section below and we'll get back to you. And if you're curious about Safeguard and Valbazin, we ta I talk about those um, in the previous two days. Bye for now.